The Chinese real estate market is driven by the mother-in-law economy. According to the vice president of the China Real Estate and Housing Association, the idea of mother-in-laws pushing up the housing price in China is not a joke but a reality. In fact, the term mother-in-law economy is used frequently in business meetings as well as political assemblies. For many of these would-be mother-in-laws, they know that marrying their daughter to someone who owns real estate is one of the best ways to help them move up economically and socially. In China, it's common for families to expect prospective son-in-laws to own property as a demonstration of their capacity to provide for their future spouses. This expectation is so ingrained that it has become a major factor in marital negotiation and matchmaking. Over 80% of single women born after 1990 said that owning a property was a prerequisite for marriage. Buying a house has therefore become one of the main financial pressures on unmarried men and on parents of unmarried men. The phrase house first and love second reflects on the priority placed on property ownership in the context of marriage. As a result, China has the most competitive dating market in the world, one where there's a high expectation for men who desire to marry. The most important of these expectations being able to provide for your would-be wife with a home. It's generally accepted internationally that housing prices are between three to six times the annual income. In the first half of 2023, the ratio of housing prices to income in China was 12x. This means that it is 12 times the annual income there. To give you some context of what this actually means, in the United States where real estate prices are at record highs, this number is still at 6x the annual income. The gap between housing prices and income is even worse than major cities like Beijing. In Beijing, a typical apartment costs half a million dollars while a white collar worker makes 30,000 annually. This means that there's almost no way for these white collar workers to be able to afford a home. For many young people, especially those from less affluent backgrounds, the challenge of meeting property requirements can be daunting. Therefore, they often need the help of family in order to make the initial purchase. Family often go to great lengths, including pooling resources or taking out significant loans to secure a home as part of a marriage process. The percentage of Chinese millennials who own a home is at an astounding 70% because of this. This dynamic not only influences individual life choices but also shapes the broader economic trends. This includes increasing the demand for housing as well as the rising property prices. And this is exactly what we saw from 2008 to 2020. Chinese families took on bigger and bigger loans relative to their disposable income in order to secure a home for their son. As a result, marriage or the mother-in-law economy is driving the growth of the real estate market in China. And given its importance, Chinese families are taking on bigger mortgages relative to their income fueling the growth in the real estate market. This creates a cycle of growth that continues to prop up the real estate index as well as add more debt to the average Chinese family household. Rising housing prices have already made marriage more expensive. And the no home no marriage mentality is even making things worse and the purchase of a house is only one of many costs to getting married. Other things include a car, a steady career, and even a dowry that is paid to the bride's family. When the housing prices continue to rise, a housing bubble is difficult to avoid. Many scholars have given a relatively clear definition of a housing bubble. Housing prices exceed a rise in people's purchasing power, and this may present a major risk to the real estate market and even endanger the broader economy. Although there are several reasons for the Chinese real estate market bubble, many experts believe that the rigid demand for marriage homes is one of the most serious and the most unique causes to this problem. Some young men make it their life goal to buy a house, while some women consider home ownership a criterion when choosing a spouse. The notion of marriage as a business transaction underscores the importance of ensuring that one's spouse comes from a stable and good background. This is often reflected in home ownership. Since the 1980s, many women have used marriage to escape poor areas and move up to more prosperous ones, especially in less developed regions. Moreover, the focus on property ownership as a prerequisite for marriage can affect mental health and well-being. Similar to the United States, places with high housing prices also tend to have better schools. Parents in Beijing are willing to buy widely expensive homes and send their children to the best schools in the country. Multiple generations of families also live under the same roof even after getting married, making this worthwhile. This happens even after someone gets married, making it worthwhile for parents and grandparents to contribute. Therefore, like I mentioned earlier, it makes sense for families to buy property together as a unit. For example, families will save money together and then pool their money to make the initial down payment and even contribute to the mortgage together. 
Family members are happy to contribute because they want to help their sons have the best chance of finding a wife as well as taking advantage of the booming real estate market. In fact, families buying apartments in China are not expecting to make money from renting. They're actually expecting a return from the rising housing prices. For example, pretty much all of the past 25 years, the returns have been pretty significant and stable. Investing in real estate is easy and a sure way to make millions. A home that was once worth only $30,000 is now worth $150,000. This equates roughly to a 7% annual increase every single year. And this consistent return has also become a problem. The central government regulates the real estate market in a way where it wants the real estate market to neither produce too big of a bubble nor drive up leverage of the real economy. According to data released by the People's Bank of China, as of the end of 2019, the household leverage ratio measured by the ratio of household debt to disposable income surged 44% in 2007 to 128% in 2019. And this is really close to the peak value of 130% before the United States subprime mortgage crisis of 2008. Home loans have always been one of the most important parts of household debt. From 2007 to 2019, the balance of home loans in the household sector rose from $380 billion to $4 trillion. This represents a 11-fold increase, which grew faster than debt as a whole. Home loans increase obviously faster than other debts. It can be judged, therefore, that the surge in household leverage was largely due to owning a house loan. The Chinese government introduced new policies to reduce and prevent housing bubbles. If marriage is a problem, then the government wants to tackle the gender imbalance that has caused such a pricey demand on males and their families. After the end of the two-child policy in May of 2022, China fully began implementing the three-child policy. This was done to optimize the population structure and solve a problem of aging workers and not enough young people. This policy has been implemented in different areas at different times, but local governments have taken a positive attitude towards it. Various incentives have been introduced in some cities encouraging people to have a third child. At the same time, China is constantly improving the maternity leave system as well as the popularization of maternity insurance. These policies are all aimed at alleviating social problems exposed by the census. The two-child, three-child policy is not the only attempt that China has made to address imbalance in the marriage market. The marriage laws in China was also revived in 2014, further clarifying the legal protection of property in marriage. The house is the most important property to be divided during a marriage dispute, and it has been given special attention in the newly devised marriage laws. The new marriage laws pay way more attention to property rights than the old law it replaced. And this old law regarded marriage house brought by the groom before marriage as joint property of the couple after marriage. Thus, if people were to divorce, the marital house would be divided equally. Although the woman had paid nothing for the house, she would receive half share of the property along with other compensations. The new marriage law in China addressed this issue by declaring that if one spouse had bought a material home in full before the marriage, the property then belongs to that spouse. Given that very few families can afford to pay for a house with a lump sum, a more common practice is to obtain a mortgage from a bank. In this case, in the event of a divorce, the number of mortgage payments contributed by each partner is used to determine the proportion of ownership. This change makes it clear that the government realizes the seriousness of property rights and problems in China and is attempting to deal with it. In the rapidly urbanizing China, property has become the most significant asset. Home ownership is seen as a critical step in achieving financial security, and it's often considered a prerequisite for marriage held by would-be mother-in-laws and their daughters. Many Chinese families view owning a home as essential for starting a family and providing a stable environment for future generations. The pressure to own a property before marriage has created a really competitive real estate market. Young couples often face intense competition from other prospective buyers. As a result, many individuals and families prioritize saving for a down payment or investing in property over other financial considerations. China's saving rate in 2022 was 46%. The United States reported a rate of 3.6%. How Chinese families are able to save so much is another topic I want to cover. And if you're interested, make sure to subscribe so you can see this video in the future. This pressure drives up demand for the real estate market, inflate property prices, and create a feedback loop where the high cost of housing further intensifies the need for home ownership. The pressure to acquire real estate can lead to significant stress and anxiety for those who are struggling to meet these expectations. Looking ahead, the relationship between real estate and marriage in China is likely to continue to evolve. As the real estate market faces challenges such as economic downturns and government regulations aimed at cooling the market, the pressure surrounding property ownership and marriage may shift. 
real estate activity has sharply contrasted since 2020, and most recently, the authorities have aimed to boost rental housing, expand affordable housing, and upgrade underdeveloped urban neighborhoods. Although new home prices have fallen slightly, the number of real estate sales have fallen dramatically. Sales have fallen amid home buyers who have concerns that developers lack sufficient financing to complete the project, and that prices will continue to decline in the future. More than 50 large developers have defaulted on their debt, and thousands of people in this sector have lost their job. This crisis has dealt a huge blow to China's economy. A Hong Kong court has ordered the liquidation of Evergrande Group, one of China's biggest real estate developers, after it was unable to restructure $300 billion it owed to investors. Just six years ago, Evergrande was riding high, pre-selling apartments to middle and upper income Chinese. Chinese households had 70% of their assets tied in apartments, and many are really worried about seeing their one asset depreciating. Additionally, changes in societal attitude and the growing influence of individualism will alter the traditional expectations around marriage. The number of marriages has fallen from 13.5 million in 2013 to just 6.8 million in 2022, and the thought of getting married makes young Chinese couples more stressed than happy. The property market is not good and it's too expensive to have a child, and the living costs are also rising. The economy is really bad right now for many young Chinese people. Marriage used to be the centerpiece of life in China, but it now no longer has that power, and many have decided to stay single for the time being. In conclusion, the Chinese real estate market driven by marriage is a really complex phenomenon. This dynamic not only influences individual life choices, but also the broader economy and societal trends. And as China continues to evolve, the real estate market as well as marriage will also evolve with it, shaping the country's future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like a lot of the templates or graphs that I use in this video, you can purchase them below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys around next time.